Hey guys, this is Camille Turner, and I'm going to take a moment to explain the setup of our TriCaster. There should be another video that explains briefly the basics of the TriCaster, but let's look at how to get everything set up and um, the background behind it all so that we know in case something goes wrong um, how to fix the issue. Here's our home page. And we can choose between having a new session, an open session. We can look at add-ons, we can get help, or we can shut it down. So, of course, this is where we would try to shut it down for the weekend. But I want to start a new session. And when you start a new session, you should name it. So I'm just going to call this SBN Setup. Skeetle Bite News Setup empty session. Okay. NTSC format HD and then I can just start the session. Okay. I'm just going to start a live production. If I go to graphics I can make some titles in advance but I can also make some titles in the live production. To go to manage I believe that takes me to... I can back up. Okay. I didn't know what that took me to but apparently this. <laughs> so for live start live production. Now we can see the TriCaster coming up, but it came up in a workspace that I don't like. Remember, it has so many windows. It even has a clock down there, which apparently we can program. There are things called buffers, which are really just short video clips of less than 15 seconds. In fact, I think I made by one of my Animation 2 students last year. It's the mosquito flying out, which I think is cute. So buffers and graphics are similar. Graphics are basically like titles. You can just get ready to pull them up on your page. And then as I've explained, DDR are just videos or pictures that you've imported that you want to show. Okay. So, I want to get my workspace right. I'm going to go to... Oh, let's see. I'm not seeing... Let's go full screen down here. Now I got my full screen over here. I got input one and input two already there. Okay, workspaces. Okay, and a lot of this, you can see mix effects and stuff. As you start fiddling with stuff, what you want starts to pop up. Okay, so anyway, let's check the audio mixer and see what, oh, look, I gotta reset my audio input. So just double click right here, double click right here. I don't think I need three and four, but I'm just going to double click just so I have them. Okay. So that gets my audio inputs, but I don't know that it has what it should. So if you need to add audio input, you, you come to the sprocket, you choose local, input one. Oh, let's see if on input three I need to put input three. Local, input three. Now, does that fix it? No, it's still coming through on input one. Oh, wait, was it input four? Okay, let's try input four. Okay. So as you can see, I don't know everything I need to know about this. But this is something that we can learn as we go along and get better with as we go. Okay. But I got input one. I can rename. You can see this camera up here. You can take a little screenshot, which ends up, I guess, believe, I believe in your DDR, your media. So anyway... The main things you have are program, which is what you want to show, and preview, which is what you want to prep to show. So you set here what you want to be in program, whether it's camera one or camera two, and then it's nice to set the contrasting one in the opposite. But if you want to key the green screen and set up a background, you need to use ME, because ME is where you can mix between two shots. Maybe that's a good abbreviation. M for mix? I don't know. So anyway, let's get some media on our DDR. See, it's empty right now. Um, I'm just going to go to the plus down at the bottom. And all my stuff is on... Look, there's a lot of 
pre-made stuff in here that you can explore. In fact, there are some titles, Electra Red, Electra Green, which we can try, and you can edit them. But anyway, all my stuff has not been put into the disc because, ta-da, here are my things. Okay, so this has the Skeeto, which I want to put not in DDR, but as a buffer. So anyway, you can see now that it showed up on TriCaster. Oh, Media D. Maybe that's where I want to paste it. Okay, so here's my transparent mosquito. Control C. Because I want it off the flash drive and on here. Media. Let me just make one. And I'm going to call this regular... SBN materials. Okay. Control V. Good, it's copying. You don't have to leave the TriCaster program. That's what I wanted to see. But you do have to make sure and copy it. Otherwise, as soon as you take that flash drive out, it's gone. So open it from your copied, not from... Well, it did copy... Okay, there it goes. So here it is in my DDR. So let's just bring DDR up into program, and that's what it looks like. And I can play. And there's the mosquito flying out. Uh, let's get our background set up and everything. So I'm going to eject this disc because I don't need it anymore. I'm pulling in the other SB News materials, which are on this one. Okay. Hey. Let's just see if I can do it like this. Open folder to view files. SB News files. I wonder if I can copy this whole folder. Copy. Oops. Did I, did I hit copy? Copy. Okay. And then I'm going to go to Media D. Importing SBN regular materials paste. Yay, it does! So this is an important step not to skip if you're ever importing materials that you're going to use more than once. So if it's just for that one sports cast or something like that and we, we don't need to reuse it, then fine. We don't need it. Otherwise, we want to copy it onto Media D into a folder location that we're going to remember and be able to reuse because we don't want several copies on the same drive over and over again in different spots. That complicates things. So, some good stuff to import. And I'm just going to put it all on the DDR1. Is we got that. I'm holding down shift. And selecting that. So now we have it all. Can I drag it in? I can. Okay. So, let's go ahead and go to image. Don't get confused. I did. I, I did white balance and then tried to key the green screen with white balance. You can always hit reset if you make a mistake. So, going to keying. Oh, check it out. It remembered from last time. But anyway, got it keyed, input 1, so now in ME, I want input 1, and I want DDR1 as my B, so DDR, I got to check out what, what do I want for DDR. Okay, I'm seeing it on the big screen over here because in program right here I have DDR1. But if I put ME1, so what we have here is the TriCaster, and it's set up in a workspace that I recommend us having, where you have the pro preview window, which just shows you what you're getting set up to air, 
and then the program window which shows you what is actually being recorded or aired. You can switch between them by hitting take on the board and if you hit auto it fades the transition or does whatever um, transition that you wanted to flip between them. And then the big screen is the program input. So, well, basically that's, that's what's going out. I like this because then you don't get confused with a bunch of windows over here wondering which one's active. It just makes it clear. You can change the settings through the workspaces tab over here to what you can see. And as you can see, we have multi-view 2, A, and that's what's making the screen over here big. And multi-view 1 is A, which shows we have all these tiles, and then we have the two preview and program windows. So it looks like with all of them, you have the two preview and program windows over here, but with this one you have, you know, different options. Anyway, let's look at... Um, on the board, you basically have the same functions as what you have in the TriCaster. We'll get into that more in detail when we start doing the programming of it. You have the mouse and keyboard, which you can use to click everything over here. Here is our mixer board. The mixer board has the audio inputs. So, the audio input, sometimes it's good to know what's going into the mixer, what sound is going into the mixer versus what sound is coming out of the TriCaster. So this is our out of the TriCaster headset. This shows us what's actually being recorded or in program. And this, as you can see, it's only plugged into the mixer board. It's telling us what's going into the mixer. So sometimes if you can't hear something coming through the TriCaster, you got to figure out, is it because I haven't programmed the TriCaster right, or is the audio just not going into the board? It's good to figure that out. Anyway, we currently have four inputs going into the board. You can see because you have the four XLR ports. And I believe only two can be active at once. I'm not clear on that understanding. But these two are wireless. So, and we're going to keep these inputs. We aren't going to switch them out and change them because we don't want to get confused. But these two are wireless. And the main areas that you're trying to focus on is usually what you want these to all be around the same level. Down here, these numbers. But up here, to adjust the volume, you're adjusting the gain channel. EQ is affecting the sound. Aux, um, I believe that deals with some of the effects over here, like these two options deal with the effects. And pan is how much you hear it in the left or right of your audio. One great thing about this board is you can mute. So you can check each person's levels one at a time and just mute the other mics so that they don't get in the way. So anyway, this is how much of an effect you want. Um, PF solo is if you want somebody to be so much louder than the music or everything else, you can hit PF solo and that's going to make that one track stand out against the rest. So effects is just like how strong do you want that effect. Main is, you know, for the whole board, what do you want the output to be? And phones is where you control how loud you can hear it in your headphones. Do not put 48 volts because all of these mics are powered by their own battery, so don't hit that. Anyway, this is where we're sending the output from the board to the TriCaster. And this is our speaker. We don't want this loud or on when we are actually recording or airing anything but it's a nice way for everybody else to get to hear what's in these headphones if we want them to. So of course you can change the volume on the side here and you can turn it on and off on the back. Uh, that covers that. Okay, so for the TriCaster, here's the TriCaster, and the power button is right here. This is where we turn it on and off. Uh, you probably want to go through the process of shutting it down before you turn it on and off. But anyway, we'll get into that. 
We have the USB ports where you can plug in your media if you want to import it into the TriCaster. Um, yeah, there's nothing back there. Okay, this is where the mic transmitters are. So this is for input one for the mic and this is for input two for the mic. So, uh, where are those mics? We actually have two going into input one and two going into in input two. So, let's see. We have a wireless and then we also have a handheld. And so I'm going to clearly mark these back so you can see which is input one and which is input two. But the main thing is you don't want to use both input ones or both input twos at the same time because you would have a lot of interference. I went ahead and plugged in the wired mics, the lav mics. Reason being, nobody remembers to turn off the wireless mics and the batteries run dead too often. So we got the wired mics going and here's how we were able to set those up. Um, I plugged them in and when you do plug them in you want to go to when you have any new audio you want to import you want to go to the audio mixer button. So I went to the audio mixer button and I actually if you double click it will set it to zero de decibels which is what I did and I had them on input three and input four so I set them there. And of course you want to test by muting everything else and turning it on. So I did that. Turns out though that it's not going to program it to go to the TriCaster unless you push one through two. And this is where I'm not really sure what's going on. But when I did that, that now shows, you can see the audio, it's not on input three or four, which I'm, I'm, I have mic four on, right? Yeah, I have mic four on. But it's actually going to input one. And the TriCaster guy told me that you got to make sure that you have mics one and two muted when you hit input one, two. And that makes me believe that we can't have both mic one and four on at the same time. Which would be aggravating because what's the point in having all these inputs if you can only have two at a time? So I'll have to follow up and ask about that. Anyway. Um, that's how it's wired for now. So you test the levels, you change the gain up here, you listen in the headphones, and then if you want to do anything about the incoming of the TriCaster, figure out what channel it's coming on. It looks like it's input one. And so that you can raise it a little bit higher and you can hear that audio going a little bit. Okay, so a wire that we have going from the TriCaster to the cameras is this one right here. These. These, if you follow them, they plug into the cameras right here. So this is how we're sending the video to the TriCaster. If you want to get the video to the input, in fact, you can put as many of the same camera up here as you want. And there may be good reasons for doing that, like maybe you want to change your setup on different shots and so you want several different camera A's for input one, input four, input six. So anyway, all of these areas have sprockets. So I can come to input four and let's just get camera A on there. Camera A, of course, is local input one. And there's another copy of camera A. Okay, input five, I'm gonna put camera two. So go to the sprocket, input two. Okay. Now, how do you get rid of the green screen? Well, it must require that sprocket, right? Okay, so you go to the sprocket, and one thing that I love about this is you can name. So I would name camera A, camera B, that way it doesn't get confusing, which is nice. Uh, not sure, capture record, interesting, okay, anyway. Here is where you can, under image, change the keying. You also can change the color and some other factors. You can change the cropping. 
But for keying, of course, you get the green and you drag it to the green. You're, it's going to key better if it looks good. Okay, so now I want to see input three. So I'm going to click three over here to get it in my program. So I clicked three on the program so I could get it on the big screen. And you can see that it's jittery. So I'm going to go up to the gear again. And I'm going to adjust the tolerance until the jitteriness seems to go away. 